Earlier this month, Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice had to tour Europe, fending off charges that the United States is illegally kidnapping and torturing suspects in the war on terror. But most everywhere she went, she was peppered with questions about the man you're about to hear from. Khaled Al Masri is a 42 year old car salesman from Germany. His incredible story of kidnapping, imprisonment, and interrogation has helped expose a secret U.S. tactic now known as Rendition. A CIA unit called the Rendition Group has used a fleet of unmarked planes to snatch suspects all around the world. Well over 100 people have disappeared this way. A number of the suspects have been flown to prisons notorious for torture, and some, like Khaled Al Masri, may have been rendered by mistake. This is one of the CIA's rendition planes that we found in Scotland, apparently during a refueling stop. Its flight logs suggest that it is the same plane that swept Khaled Al Masri away from his home and family in the winter of 2004. Al Masri told us he was on vacation in Macedonia when he was snatched off a bus and ended up in the hands of a group of silent, masked men. They took me to this room and they hit me all over and they slashed my clothes with sharp objects, maybe knives or scissors, and they took off the blindfold and I saw that there were a lot of men standing in the room. They were wearing black masks and black gloves. Al Masri says after his clothes were removed, the men pulled a hood over his head, put a diaper on him, shackled him on the plane and injected him with drugs. He had been rendered in a program developed in part by former CIA officer Michael Scheuer. And the option of not doing something is, is extraordinarily dangerous to the American people. Until last year, Scheuer was a senior CIA official in the counterterrorism center. He created the CIA's Osama bin Laden unit and helped set up the rendition program during the Clinton administration. Basically, the National Security Council gave us the mission, take down these cells, uh, dismantle them and take people off the streets so they can't kill Americans. They just didn't give us anywhere to take the people uh, after we captured them. So the CIA started flying suspects to Egypt and Jordan. Scheuer says renditions were authorized by Clinton's National Security Council and officials in the Congress and all understood what it meant to send suspects to those countries. They don't have uh, the same legal system we have, but we know that going into it. And so the idea that we're gonna suddenly throw our, our hands up like Claude Rains in Casablanca and say, I'm shocked that, that justice in Egypt isn't like it is in Milwaukee, is there's a certain uh, um, disingenuousness to that. And one of the things that you know about justice in Egypt is that people get tortured. Well, it can be rough. I, I, I have to assume that that's the case. Doesn't that make the United States complicit in the torture? It, it, you'll have to ask the lawyers. I mean, it's a convenience, isn't it? It's convenient in the sense that it allows American policymakers and American politicians to avoid making hard decisions. Yes, it's very convenient. It's finding someone else to do your dirty work. The indispensable tool for that work is a fleet of executive jets authorized to land at all U.S. military bases worldwide. Can you tell me something about the planes that no. are used in these operations? No. They're Scheuer wouldn't tell us the information is classified and the CIA declined to talk about it. But it turns out that the CIA has left plenty of clues out in the open in the public record. The tail number of this Gulfstream jet was first reported by eyewitnesses to a rendition in Pakistan in 2001. In public records, the tail number comes back to a company called Premier Executive Transport Services with headquarters listed in Dedham, Massachusetts. But Dedham is a dead end. Premier appears to be a CIA front company. The address is a law office on the second floor of this bank. There's no airline there. But there was one thing in the records that did lead somewhere, a second tail number. That number belonged to this unmarked 737, the plane we found in Scotland. Using the web and aviation sources, we were able to find 600 flights to 40 countries. It appears the number of flights increased greatly in the Bush administration after 9-11. The planes have been based in North Carolina. They usually fly to Dulles Airport outside Washington before heading overseas. Major destinations read like a road map to the war on terror. 30 trips to Jordan, 
19 to Afghanistan, 17 to Morocco, 16 to Iraq. Other stops include Egypt, Libya, and Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. The flight log shows one flight took the 737 to Skopje, Macedonia, then to Baghdad, and finally Kabul, Afghanistan. It's a flight that matches the date that Khalid al-Masri says he was taken. When I opened my eyes in the cell, I saw some writing in Arabic on the walls, and the inmate in the cell next to me told me we were in Kabul and the guards who guarded us all the time were Afghani. So it was clear that it was Afghanistan. Al-Masri showed us a prison floor plan he drew from memory. He says other prisoners were from Pakistan, Tanzania, Yemen, and Saudi Arabia. Al-Masri told us he was interrogated by an American through an interpreter. He yelled at me and he said that you're in a country without laws and no one knows where you are. Do you know what that means? I said yes. It was very clear to me that he meant I could stay in my cell for 20 years or be buried somewhere, and nobody knows what happened to you. What were they asking you? Whether I had contacts with Islamic parties like Al-Qaeda or the Muslim Brotherhood or aid organizations, lots of questions. He says he told the Americans he'd never been involved in militant Islam, but Al-Masri says he was beaten and kept in solitary confinement. What was the worst moment? that you had? The whole time was bad. We were mistreated, humiliated. We were treated worse than animals. Al-Masri says he was questioned for five months and then released just as mysteriously as he was taken. He was put back on the unmarked plane, flown to Albania, and dropped by the side of the road. I was in a place where there were no people, in the dark, and they told me to take a path and not look back. I walked along the path and thought they would shoot me in the back. After all of this, it was going to end that way. Yeah. Were you surprised when they didn't shoot you in the back? <laughs> yes, I had a funny feeling. I thought they have this problem with me and they want to get rid of me in some way, maybe in an unsuspecting country. Did anyone ever tell you that They'd made a mistake. He told me that they had confused names and they had cleared it up, but I can't imagine that. You can clear up switching names in a few minutes. An intelligence official confirmed to us this was a case of mistaken identity. The CIA realized its mistake when a technical analysis proved Al Masri's German passport was genuine. On her European tour this month, Secretary of State Rice acknowledged rendition is a weapon in the war on terror, but she added this. The United States does not transport and has not transported detainees from one country to another for the purpose of interrogation using torture. And yet, according to the flight logs, there are frequent flights to places like Tashkent, Uzbekistan, a country with a well-known reputation for torture.